Hello everyone and welcome to the 2016 Firekeepers Casino 400 at Michigan International Speedway race review where I recap what we before the race, during the race, and after the race looking ahead to the upcoming race. So, overall thoughts on this race. To grade Michigan, uh, I'm going to give it an average. Uh, uh, and, and by average, uh, to be more specific, just kind of like average Michigan race. Um, definitely a little disappointing considering the fact that NASCAR brought out uh, an even lower downforce package uh, for this race, uh, and we're also going to see it uh, at Kentucky coming up. Uh, and Kentucky is less than is less than, than a month away. Um, and considering the fact that taking away the, the downforce proved that both last year in the experiments of Kentucky and Arlington, and most of the race this year, it's proven to really improve the quality of the racing. Um, when I heard that NASCAR was taking away even more downforce in Michigan, I thought, oh great, Michigan's going to be um, a, a fantastic show to watch. And you know, I think it was. Simply that expectation that I had, and I, and I know many, many others ha had this, uh, is what made it disappointing, at least for um, me. I mean, it, it wasn't the worst Michigan race uh, by any stretch. Uh, we certainly saw that last August with the high bag package, which uh, flopped. Uh, but I was just kind of expecting more, and that's what led, and that's what led, to, led to be disappointing. Um, but I'll talk more about the Euro, the Euro package uh, coming up. Uh, it will have its like, own segment. Um, jo Joey Logano uh, wins his first race of 2016, and if you told me that it would take uh, uh, up until mid-June, uh, before, before, before the season started, that, that it would take uh, up until like about mid-June for Logano to get his first points win of the year, I would not have believed you. I would have already thought that Logano would have had a win or two by now, and he, um, and I felt like that for, that for a lot of the season, he, he had... He didn't really have the speed to win. I mean, like, I think, like, early on, he definitely sh sh showed that he, that he had passed across the win, like, for him about Las Vegas. But then I felt like that he, but then I felt like he just went a long time without really having speed of a winning race car. Um, but, but he was finally, but, but he was finally able to do that today in Michigan. Uh, his team hit the set up correctly. He dominated the race with 138 laps uh, and went on to win. Uh, and maybe that, that's one of the reasons why the quality of the racing wasn't as good as I expected it to be, because just simply the fact that Logano and his team hit the set right, and they were just simply untouchable. And that's going to happen in racing uh, every, every once in a while, regardless of, of the rules package. Okay, so pre-race notes. So I already mentioned that NASCAR brought in a new rules package for uh, this race, and also, uh, also we're going to see it back at... Uh, Kentucky, basically, uh, the best way to describe it is, um, well, I like, to, I like to call it the even lower downforce package, uh, but, but, you can, but you can call it what you want, it. and basically, uh, the title speaks for itself. It's just taking away, it's just uh, further downforce reductions. It is similar to the race, to the package you saw in the All-Star race, which had less downforce, less side force, less skew. Uh, this race was just uh, less downforce. Uh, and, and notable changes, um, the the wrist spoiler got uh, um, got uh, a, a couple uh, inches of the spoiler's width got got taken away, like four on each side, and the splitter what went from three point five inches to two point five inches. So, um, so 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 really tiny. If I, spoiler, if I said splitter, I, I'm sorry to, to confuse you. Um, so that, so 2.5, so if you saw images of that, or if you're at least paying attention, or if you're at least paying attention to the race, then, um, you, you definitely saw some really tiny spoilers. Um, I think Daryl Watchby said that, you know, that's the time, that's the, the tiniest spoiler he's seen in, um, like, what, like 30, 40, 40 years or something, you know, so it's been, like, Ages since it's below that tiny, but hey, the less inches that they take off, the better the racing will, will be. Uh, the splitter did get some adjustments, like like underneath the spoiler, a couple of inches was taken off. So, uh, but but those were really the only two like changes that I am aware of. Uh, anyway, and and, and the logout debate continued. So, uh, I remember first, uh, and earlier, and, and during the week. Uh, leading up to, to the weekend, um, I, I saw for the first time, um, like, crew chiefs 
uh, and, and then later on a car owner really be really be the first ones to speak out against the penalties you get for not having all five against secured on it uh, in post race inspection. Um, Tony Gibson, car versus crew chief, had him as Pocono, um, and Tony Gibson. I remember in an NASCAR America interview, he talked about how he wasn't a fan of it. Uh, and then Cal Larson's crew chief, Chad Johnson, got suspended uh, for not having all five against secured on every wheel after Pocono. And then in his car, Ch Chip Ganassi, uh, he, he called the login issue uh, a, a silly issue or, or, just, or just silliness, saying that um, last, he, he, he's kind of like, it was kind of like, I think he, he, he was basically saying, like, the focus needs to be, there needs to be less focus and talk on lug nuts and more focus on kind of like the actual like racing. And I will kind of agree with him, you know, I kind of wish that after the whole Tony Stewart buying, which, which I thought was ridiculous, uh, and the NASCAR implementing new lug nut rules, um, the, lug nut, the topic about, about lug nuts will be over, but uh, it hasn't, and unfortunately it will likely continue. So uh, sort of highlighting the NASCAR weeks from uh, highlighting, highlighting the NASCAR news from week to week, and that is like going to be very fun. So, uh, but but like I said earlier, pretty much the first time I saw people in NASCAR speaking out against the, the, the Lugner rule, uh, or just simply not, not in favor of it. And then we get to practice and qualifying. So Chase Elliott was the fastest in opening practice, and, and right away, these cars were fast, e even with less downforce. 250 miles per hour, I think, I think during the race, or, or early in the weekend, I saw 260 miles per hour. Uh, so, so, so even though less downforce, these cars are still going incredibly fast. Um, and then and later that Friday, Joe Legault wins the poll after coming in close the past two weeks. Uh, I, I know that Charlotte, and then uh, I know that Charlotte and Pocono, he, he, he uh, uh, started second. So Legault finally gets the poll. I think this is his second pole of the year. Um, and then on Saturday, Carl Edwards was the fastest in second practice, and Austin Dillon was the fastest in happy hour. So certainly, it was sort of looking like it could be any, anybody's game uh, heading into Sunday. So let's talk a little bit more about the even lower downforce package and why I thought that the racing machine was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, it was actually just a little over a year ago that NASCAR announced a low downforce package to Kentucky and and, and, and man, what a difference! What a difference a year makes. Um, it just shows. It just sh shows you how much uh, taking away the downforce does have a does have a positive impact on the racing most of the time. Uh, that being said, even though this race had even less downforce compared to all the all the other points races so far this season, it was a little it was a little bit disappointing. But I don't think it really has, has to do really much with the air package, but rather with the track itself. Um, no, Michigan is not the. It, it doesn't have to do it with the track layout, but, but the track surface. Michigan got our page four years ago, in other words, 2012, and and the quality of racing has really declined a lot since then. I mean, before that, uh, Michigan races in Michigan were very similar to Fontana. You know, old old race surface, multi grooves. Uh, we haven't seen that in Michigan in the past couple of years, uh, uh, and even though we, we did see some two who had racing. The racing group really, um, the fact that the, the, the service is still new uh, means that the group is still kind of narrow in, in a way, uh, and it's going to take, and it's likely going to take a couple more years for the service to get, for, for the racing group to, to go all the way from the bottom to the top, like we have at Fontana. Uh, uh, so I think, it, so I think it likely ha has more to do with the surface uh, in Michigan in the actual uh, aero package and, and this year really has shown in my opinion how much um our, our racetrack surface affects the quality of the racing you know for example i've checked atlanta and fontana which have all the race services the racing and those tracks have been pretty good in my opinion and then we go to checks of kansas and you know uh and this in michigan and the racing just and the racing was just simply a dud so also good you probably also did, did not bring that great of a tire to michigan in Michigan as well, um, understand understandably so because there wasn't a whole lot of time to uh, prepare one likely, and a it's also just hard to bring a new tire to it's hard to bring a good tire to a new surface as well. 
so that's just my ex explanation of why I think the racing was disappointing, and, and I know I'm not the only one out there who thinks that. I'm sure many of you have heard about this over the past uh, few years, but it's definitely worth bringing up once again, especially since um, history was made, and you may not be aware, aware of it. So, uh, so, there's been, so there's been a lot of talk about, about, about youth movement in NASCAR, newer, younger drivers coming in, uh, being able to battle with, and then in the future, uh, they will kind of replace the, the older veterans. And, and just look at, look at this top three. Uh, it, it is definitely blurry, but just simply look at it. Joe Legano, Chase like Kyle Larson, 26 years old, 20 years old, and 23 years old. The average age of these three, 23, which that is a new record for youngest top three in terms of like average age ever uh, in this record series. Uh, the previous the previous record was like was, was like 24.7, which I don't know what race year that was, but um, but, but so so yeah, so history was definitely made made uh today um really when i think about it jelly guy was 26 and it's hard to believe that you know this is like his eighth full-time season i i believe it 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 most it feels like the guy has been around for a lot longer than that i mean i mean i, I mean i've seen from pretty much i i think i've yeah i've seen his, his like his like entire cup career uh on tv from like start to finish or just the entire nascar career period uh i remember when he made his first expanding start in the like in the june 20, 2008 dover race in, in what was uh the back then the nationwide series uh, um Ch Ch chase elliott continues continues to uh run running club running incredibly well um and is just and is getting closer and closer to closer to gain that first career win uh, Kyle Larson has definitely been, has definitely been picking up the pace as of recently, uh, and so great runs by, by all three uh, drivers uh, today. And get used to it. We're, we're going to be seeing. I think I think we will be seeing more, more of this down the road. So I know that this is a shorter review, but but really I think I've said very much what needs to be uh, said. So wrapping up Michigan, not the race I hoped for, but um, but oh well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this how, how this aero package performs at Kentucky, which is even a newer service, but also Kentucky uh, got, re got reconfigured. Turns 1 and 2 is now banked slightly differently than turns 3 and 4, so it'll be interesting to see how, how it performs on, on that surface um, or racetrack. I wish that, one thing I wish they could do is that uh, they, could, they could use this aero package at Darlington, because I, I really think that, you know, like this aero, pa this aero, this aero package should get a chance to perform should get a chance at a at a, at a older abrasive surface, and, and that's and that's basically the surface of Darlington. Um, maybe maybe that will happen. I doubt it. Uh, I don't think. I just can't see this package being used like in like the second half of the season. I don't really quite see that, but but, but, but who knows? Anything can happen. Uh, but now let's look ahead to Sonoma, which is in two weeks from now because next week is, is Father's Day. Uh, um, only expanding in truck racing at, at Iowa, so so a couple weeks off. So, uh, but after that, we head to Sonoma. Uh, um, and really, um, so far, if you look at this race in the past three, four, four different winners, each winning their first race in 2016. Matt Kenseth at Dover, Martin Church Jr. at Charlotte, Kurt Busch at Pocono, and now Joe Legato in Michigan. And with Sonoma coming up, and Daytona immediately after that. I think we could also see two more new winners that could get their first win uh, this season, or heck, maybe ever in their career. Uh, especially uh, Sonoma, which which Road Course has really over the past few years not only have they uh, how not only have the races and Road Courses been great in recent times, but also they're kind of um, they're kind of they've kind of been a little bit of equalizers, you know, because you know because you know we've seen drivers that. Don't usually perform well the whole season, but perform well there like AJ Allmendinger. Uh, more dark horses it could even be Jamie, could even be Jamie McMurray, Clint Boyer. Uh, so we could so, so Sonoma in two weeks from now could be a little bit could be sort of any, anybody's game really when, when you think about it. But but in my opinion, if I'm going to go with history, if I'm going to go with history, I'm going to say that. Um, I'm going to go 
with this a little, a little bit harder. You, you know what? Uh, he 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 actually has. He, he's only won there once, and it's actually his only real Chris one ever. But but but, but he has a good uh, 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 average finish. Jimmy Johnson. Um, he won in Fontana, and he'll win in the other California race at, at Sonoma. But like I said, it could be a little bit of anyone's game. As far as uh, the low hours package at Sonoma, I think like like at checks, I think like at Martinsville, I don't really think it's gonna make a difference. I, I think the racing is pretty much gonna be the same. Could you could bring us a, a sub a tire? I don't I don't exactly know, but overall I hope overall I hope Sonoma in two weeks from now is um, a good race. And that's pretty much all I gotta say. So thank you all for watching this race review. Um, and because there's an outbreak, I'm gonna hopefully try to, to make some videos that I'm not that hasn't that isn't the race review or, or diecast review. So hopefully I can do that. I have a I have at least one idea in mind based on based off of uh, based off of a video a short video series on an channel that I'm I am subscribed to. Not gonna go into more details than that, but hopefully but you might see a um, a video like that, uh, take a guess. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and bye.